Welcome back. We're going to continue now with our exploration into some of the physics behind martial arts. Today we're going to look at energy and we're going to try to better understand the role speed plays with regards to properly executing your techniques. Now there's a, a very important law in physics. That's the law of conservation of energy. And it tells us that the initial energy has to equal the final energy. Now energy can change forms, but it can't just appear out of nowhere and it can't just disappear for no reason. It has to go somewhere. So if we have a certain amount of mass that's in motion, that mass has an energy that's associated with it, an energy of motion. We call that kinetic energy. And the kinetic energy is equal to one half the mass times the speed squared. So what is this telling us? Well, if you double the mass, what happens to the energy? It's going to double. Now, if you double the speed, what's going to happen to the energy? It's going to quadruple. That's why if you're going twice the speed limit, you've now quadrupled uh, the potential damage that you could incur should you get into an accident. Because that energy has to go somewhere. And very likely, it's going to go into damaging your car and, and damaging you. Uh, so this gives us a good feel for the importance of speed. Now in a previous lesson, we were looking at impact time. In, in the process of doing that, we looked at a very simple model, a very ideal, simplistic case. And very often in physics, we look at simple models because uh, the simple model gives us a better understanding, a better conceptual feel for what's going on in a more complex one. So this model, which I'm referring to, if you haven't seen the video, we had a mass. And that mass was in motion with a certain velocity. So this mass had some initial momentum until some external force. And this was the only force. Perhaps this is a cart on a frictionless track. And then some force comes in, and this is a constant force that's acting on this mass until it depletes it's momentum. So now we have no more momentum. And what we did was we used Newton's second law, which we introduced you to in, in the first part of this series, and we, we rewrote it in terms of momentum, and we ended up arriving at an expression that told us what this force had to be in terms of the change in momentum that this mass experienced and the time it took for it to experience that change. So we arrived at, at an expression that says that this force is equal to the mass times the velocity because remember this is the change in momentum. If you have some initial momentum and the final moment, momentum is zero, then the change in momentum is simply the mass times the velocity. Uh, we don't care about the negative sign that would be associated with that because we're just concerned with increasing the magnitude, the numerical value of this. So, the force then is equal to the mass times the velocity divided by the time, again, that that change took place. So we use this simple model to better understand the role of impact time. And we discovered that time is something we can manipulate, but we can't do so in a way that would increase this force. Now, is there an expression that we can look at in terms of, of the force that's delivered, but using energy instead of momentum? And there is. And now instead of looking at time, we're going to look at distance. So I want to use the same simplistic model. I'm not going to derive the expression or go through any of the, the steps to show you where it, where it comes from. I just want to show you the expression. Uh, in doing so, I think we'll give you even greater insight into why speed is so important. So again, we have the same situation. Now, in terms of the kinetic energy, we have an expression that would, based on this circumstance, we have an expression that would be written that the force times the distance over which that force is acting, so now it's not time, it's distance, is equal to the change in kinetic energy, which again, same thing we got here, the final kinetic energy is zero, so the change in kinetic energy is one half mv squared. And now I'm not gonna, you could arrive uh, at an expression for force, but what I think we're a little more interested in today is distance. Let's stick with our simplistic model and let's assume that this is a constant force and let's assume that the situation is such that uh, even if we increase the speed, this force is the same. Not that that is going to be uh, the exact circumstance when we're striking an opponent, uh, 
Uh, but it does give us, as, I, as I've emphasized, it gives us a little bit more of a conceptual feel. So the distance now is equal to mv squared over 2f. And if we, the mass is constant, if we say that this is a constant force, what happens to the distance if we double the speed? Well, the distance is going to quadruple. This should give you a better understanding as to why there's so much more damage. Say you crash a car into a tree. Now you take that same car and you double the speed. You can imagine why there's going to be so much more damage to that car. Because now it would take four times the distance to bring that mass to rest. And as I, I said before, energy has to go somewhere. In this case, it's going to go into deforming your car. And uh, we can, in a very similar manner, extrapolate this idea to our striking. If we increase our speed, well, this tells us the time over which the change in, in momentum would occur. Uh, this tells us the distance. And so if we increase our speed, we're going to increase the potential damage that we can do to our opponent. So what have we learned? Does, it, does this mean that mass doesn't matter? No, on the contrary, we still want to bring as much mass into play as possible. What happens to this if you can double your mass? You've doubled the distance. What if you can double the mass and double the speed? Imagine the end result. The goal, however, is to bring as much mass into play as fast as possible. But don't bring any more mass than necessary into play. What do I mean than necessary? If you start bringing more mass into play at the cost of speed, now you have a problem because you want to maximize your speed. Okay? So there you have it. Speed is a very critical component to any effective martial arts technique, and there's the physics behind why. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. We'll be back with another video, another look at some of the physics involved in martial arts soon, uh, at which point we're going to start heading in another direction. We're going to start looking at some of the rotational dynamics that are involved. All right, take care, and we'll see you soon.